Hi everyone, this is Coach B. Let's talk about International Women's Day. The theme this year is breaking the bias. How are you breaking the bias? How am I breaking the bias um, in your life, in, your, in every area of life? We are to break the bias. So I want to offer you five different ways that you can break the bias this year. Happy International Women's Day! Okay, so the first way that you can break the bias is for you to know you are enough, know your true identity, and be contented in who you are, be assured in who you are, know that this is me, and this is what I'm here to do. This is why I'm on planet Earth, and I'm going to fulfill my purpose, I'm going to fulfill my vision, I'm going to fulfill the reasons, uh, the, the things that drive me. So you can break the bias by knowing who you are. If the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So if you don't know who you are, other people are going to come, society is going to come, culture is going to come, even people that love you, people that don't love you, everybody has an idea of who they want you to be who it pays them for you to be. So if you don't know who you are, you're going to be borrowing different identities, different voices, and different opinions. And that just makes for confusion. It is impossible to fulfill destiny. It is impossible to be everything that you want, you are created to be if you don't know who you are. Because if, if you're trying to be somebody else, then, of course, you're going to be doing other things, or you may even be doing what you are meant to be doing, but there will be uh, a certain thing lacking. Authenticity is going to be lacking. And when there's no authenticity, there's no weight, there's no integrity, you're not one with your message. So you may be saying the right things, you may be trying to take the right action, but it just doesn't really, you know, it doesn't just come across as the people that you are here to serve so there's a knowing of who you are and there's a knowing of how you're wired to, to to fulfill your purpose and so one thing that you must do this year of breaking the bias is knowing who you are take time to study yourself take time to to like like you're going to school to discover who this incredible woman is who you really are. What are the things that make you tick? What are the things that make you tick? What are the things that frustrate you? What are the things that make you happy? What are the things you enjoy doing? What are the things you detest doing? You must know yourself. What kind of environment do you thrive in? What do you like? What do you dislike? What kind of persons should you be moving with, interacting with? What kind of people uh, do you need to surround yourself with in order to be at your best and to shine your brightest? You must know that. You must know that. So that's the very first thing. If you're going to be breaking the bias, you must know yourself. And another reason why you have to know yourself is, you know, we're saying breaking the bias and everybody's probably thinking, oh, the society is so biased against women and... I know that, but the, the fact is, yes, society is biased, but if you're not careful, even you are biased against yourself. Think of the lady who has money, but she can't really show her money. She can't really spend it. She can't really be obvious to the society and to people around her about how rich she is because she's afraid that the right man is not going to come because she's afraid that she will not find a husband, in quotes, because she's rich. She's biased against herself, but it is society that has made her that way. So there, there are ways that, that society has shaped each and every one of us, and in order to break the bias against yourself, you must recognize the bias. So you have to start looking at yourself, your decisions, your actions, you must look at the, the things that you do and ask yourself, why am I doing this? What is motivating me to do this? 
if you know what's motivating you to do it, then you can recognize if there's a bias in there or if it's just, you know, just a, a, an attitude that needs to be changed or a behavior that needs to be, you know, uh, adjusted. So you must know yourself. You must recognize the instances where you have been biased against yourself and you must start to make amends to break the bias. Okay, the second thing, and this one is for career people, is that you must be willing in this year of breaking bias to break the bias in your industry, in your career. And you must never, uh, and we're not denying the fact that the glass ceiling exists, but we are saying we're just going to ignore it, we're going to do our best work, and we are going to rise to the very top. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So you must consciously decide that what is the highest position that is attainable in this industry. And I'm not even saying in this company. Like, it's not even just in the company that you're in, but the entire industry. Like, what is the highest position that is achievable? And then you must set your goals. You must create a career plan and a path that leads you directly to where you desire to get to. You must never believe that there are limitations. And even though uh, limitations do exist, but the reason why we choose not to believe them is that if we believe them, then they exist for us. But if you believe that, yes, they exist, but they will not apply to me, then you, your subconscious, your mind and your actions will be geared towards avoiding those limitations and, you know, just deciding to move ahead and to move up. It is time that we women become more represented at the very, very, very top. And I'm talking about the top, top. And kudos to all the women that are making waves. Kudos to all the women that are standing up and standing tall and, you know, ruling and, you know, kinging in their industries. And it's just high time that we have more representatives and representation up there. And this is not just the one in career. It is in business, it is in politics, it, just anywhere you decide to major in, be the best in it. Even for people who choose to be full-time housewives, they're like, I'm going to, like, I enjoy and I choose to take care of my children. I want you to rise to the very top of it. I want you to bring those children up the very best way that you can. I want you to just go for it. I want you to go for it. Do not hold back. Do not do half, you know, don't, don't go halfways. Don't do shoddy work. Just go ahead and do the best that you can do. It is what you owe yourself. It is what you owe yourself to be the very best, you know? Like, if you choose to be a, 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 a full-time mom, for instance, those children should be the best children, like, the best brought-up children ever. And uh, that brings us to another discussion, of course, that does that mean that people who, like, focus on careers or businesses cannot be the best moms ever? Of course not. Honestly, I believe that everything is possible. Everything is possible. And of course, if you are trying to juggle a family, uh, children, uh, a business or a job together, uh, of course, you're going to need a lot of like support system. You're going to have to build a solid support system structure uh, around yourself. You're going to have to like spend money for in exchange for convenience and in exchange for the things that you want. But are we saying it is impossible? Of course it is possible. There are women that are achieving it. And you must just believe that uh, you're going to achieve it. It's going to be your, uh, that's who you're going to be. You're going to be that person that has the perfect children, uh, that person that has the best job and is still rising, that person that has the best marriage, that person that has you know, the best passions, and, you know, you're just, you're just, like, at the very top everywhere. Like, you should have a mantra that, except if I don't do it, if I choose to do it, I'm going to be the best at it. 
it helps you streamline the things that you have decided to do and it helps you to be the best in those things. So anything you decide to do, ask yourself, who excelled at this thing? Man or woman, whoever it was that has excelled at it before, then we check. Success always leads a path. How did they achieve it? Then we, we throw the path. Of course, it's not going to be, oh, they did this, then I will do this. But in, in studying the lives of great people, you are able to pick one or two things that you can apply to your path and to your plans. And before you know it, you have broken the bias and you know, you're just out there and you're up there. So don't stop. Rise to the very top. Rise to the very, very top. The third thing that you need to focus on if you're going to break the bias is that you must pay attention to your money flows. You must pay attention to your wealth flows. And with this one, it's a very tricky one. We have women who have accomplished a lot, who have built houses, but pretend, or maybe come into an agreement with maybe the, the, the fathers or the brothers that uh, they should pretend that they own the property. There are women, we've heard stories of women who have had to, to buy houses or build houses and bring their spouses into those houses, especially maybe the spouse is not doing as well as they are. So we're living together, you're living together in this house, it belongs to you, but the spouse does not know, so he's contributing to the rent or he's paying the rent every year. And it is, you know, that's because of, you know, this fear of if he knows that I have this much, really, is he going to get angry? Is he going to get edgy? Is he going to become... Uh, you know, it's going to develop a complex, you know. So, women, it's it's time to stop shrinking, really. It's just time to, to rise into everything that we're called to be. And, of course, um, we're breaking the bias, not just for the women. We're also breaking the bias for our men folks. So, we're going to keep educating them. Nobody, nobody can teach the world around you how to treat you except you. Or let me say nobody is best at teaching the world how to treat you other than yourself. So you know, as much as other people can say, treat this person like this, you must tell the world, you must show the world, this is how I love to be treated. This is how I deserve to be treated. This is how I would rather be treated. And so it is also in the way you treat yourself. It is in the way that you show up for yourself in the things that concern you. Many women are adept at helping other people. Someone has a need, you're there. Somebody's birthday, you're there. You're the one planning everything. It comes to your own birthday. You're not planning it. You're not even really... And deep down within you, you know that you want the best birthday ever. You want a surprise birthday. You want your friends to go all out for you. But you are not demanding what you want. What is that about? It is time to actually be comfortable in our skins enough to de determine and to inform uh, the people that love us that actually this is the gift I would love for my birthday. Actually, this is how I would love to be treated for my birthday. Actually, this, actually that. So it is time to plan your wealth. And it is in the planning that you, you decide how much do I want to earn and what are my streams of income? Where am I going to bring in this money from? And how am I going to grow it? You know, it is one thing to decide to make money. Then it is one thing, it is another thing to decide to multiply the money that you're making. And then, of course, there's also the growing your wealth. So, you know, we have to start taking an interest in money conversations that have been happening around us for generations, but that we're just like, oh, once I'm okay, my children are okay, uh, uh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It is time to have enough so that you can help other women, so that you can help men, so that you can help children, so that you can contribute to the, 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 the you know, contribute to your quota. Help an NGO, help the children that are suffering in, in, in a less privileged uh, nation or a third world country, 
just help. Like be empowered enough to be able to help. Let it be that it's not just words that you are offering as as help or as consolation. Follow, let your money follow your mouth. Let your money follow the things that you're saying. Like, oh, I'm interested in helping uh, people uh, to move from poverty to having enough to eat. Then put your money where your mouth is. You should be able to start sending people to school. People who, who, who can't afford it but who are bright enough. You should be able to help people learn trades and, you know, just help someone help. In fact, don't just help someone. Be empowered enough to be able to help a community. Communities, if the need arises. So we should be able to, to, to break the bias when it comes to our wealth. And there is a thing huh, that I want to even, like, gist with you guys about when it comes to this wealth thing. You know how some women stay in the homes, uh, on happy homes? Some women stay in, I mean, many people have happy homes and we're happy for them. Like, if you're in a happy home, oh, great, congrats. And if you're, in, if you're not really in a happy home, but you're just there, like, because society or because of the children or because you don't have an option, maybe you, you, you're never really empowered enough to, to, to be able to stand on your own, then, um, I mean, I mean, I, I, we can't tell you to hang in there, we can't tell you to leave, but we can give advices that can help you position yourself and to position your children so that, I mean, everybody is okay. So when we may say that word, oh, I'm, I'm staying in there because of my children, uh, yes, you're staying there because of your children, but how are you safeguarding the interest of your children even as you're staying there? So the women who are married to well-to-do guys, like maybe wealthy or even comfortable, and you keep saying, oh, I'm staying there for the children, but have you encouraged this guy to, to create a trust fund for the children, for instance, so that there's money for their higher education or so that they have money to have an early start in life? Have you empowered uh, the children? Have you used the influence, the little influence that you have left with your spouse to encourage them to write a will? And I know that's been another conversation entirely because there's so much bias that needs to be broken along those lines. There are, there are cultures where women are not even allowed to own properties. There are cultures where women are not allowed to write wills, like, like if a woman dies, her husband inherits her. So what about the children that she's left behind? And I know that some of these conversations sometimes can sound morbid, but it is high time we start having those kind of conversations. Like if you're really saying, oh, I'm staying for my children, then how are you actually safeguarding the interest of these children? How are you ensuring that they can always mm. continue to live the kind of lifestyle that they are used to or even a better lifestyle, either by, you know, having a stable or stable means of income, having multiple means of income that you can use to secure the, the, the future and give them an, an early start, a good start in life, or being able to take a stand and speak for them when it comes to what um, they're able to get and you know, getting your spouse to, to give them a good start as well. So we need to steer the conversation in those directions uh, and so that we're not just being emotional about many of these issues, but we're being logical, you're taking logical decisions, uh, even though they may stem from emotional issues that you're going through. So it is high time that you break the bias when it comes to like the best use of your intellect, think about the future. Think about what these children need in the future and start to secure it for them. And for some of us, it's not even just children. It's other beneficiaries. You have people that are dependent on you, your family members, your parents, aging parents. How are you making sure that they're going to be taken care of? You know, in common law, it was said that when a woman marries, that the husband owns her and owns everything that she has, everything that belongs to her. And 
<laughs> it was such, it, it, it didn't make sense. It still doesn't make sense. Thank God it no longer exists in most parts of the world. There are areas that, the areas in the world where if a man dies, his wife gets maybe one over four of his properties. And in most cases, it's either a man and a woman have built, like built, uh, you know, built the, the wealth together from when they were young or when they got married. They built it together and then, oh, he dies and family gets majority of it. Or the wife does not even get anything. There are cultures where the wife is chased away, mm -hmm. like she is maltreated and she is chased out with her children. There are cultures where if she wants to be able to enjoy her husband's wealth, she has to, she has to like, like, <laughs> She has to marry the brother or something ridiculous. There are different cultures. And we must have tough conversations about breaking the bias in these areas as well. The bias must be broken. So the fourth thing that you must do if you're going to be breaking the bias is that you should be able to lift others. You should be able to help others. If for one reason or the other you have been helped and you have been enlightened and you have been able to break some biases, then you should be able to help others to break the biases. So you can help younger people, you can help younger women, you can help young, I mean, just choose choose the statistics of people you want. You can go into the universities and help the female, uh, the ladies before they even finish school so they know what they're looking for and they, they, they're able to prioritize. There's a way that society has taught us that if a woman has achieved everything and she has not uh, been married, uh, there's a stigma that society just puts. And it doesn't matter how, how achieved, like how much she has achieved. And it is time to break those biases. If you want to get married, of course, desire it and work towards it and have it. But if you don't want to as well, you should be able to live a full and satisfying life. You should be able to enjoy life and do good. And actually, society should be able to accept you and accord you. You know, so we have to break the bias when it comes to that. If it's secondary school children, uh, girls, you want to help, you we must be able to get who is going into the secondary schools and helping these girls to develop a, a, a positive mindset, the mindset of success. Who is going in there and helping them, you know, that the girls who, I mean, I don't know what the statistics uh, say, but the girls who, who had their first, like, exposure to maybe rape or other sexual issues in secondary school. So who is going there and helping them get their, themselves right when they're, when they're under peer pressure? And they're about to cave in. Who is going there? Who is writing the books that we're distributing to them for free so that these girls can actually, you know, have people to look up to? And you know, the thing about breaking bias is that it's not even just in the going there to help or doing this or doing that. That is valid. But it is also in being everything that you can be, everything that you have been uh, created to be everything that capacity has been put in you to achieve. When you achieve them, then you are able to help other people. And even if you're not expressly saying it and saying, I want to help you, just you living the best life that you can live is enough validity for them, is enough proof for them that it is possible. And people can look at that and they can say, because this person achieved it, then I can do it. So break the bias by becoming all that you can be and then by taking that success and, you know, showcasing it and using it to encourage other people, younger people, older people, and using it to encourage them until we're able to break the bias again and again and until every woman um, breaks the bias in, in, in their lives, you know. And the last thing that I want us to consider when we talk about breaking the bias, the last thing I want us to consider is that we need to embrace diversity. We need to embrace uh, 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 what makes us different. You cannot look at another woman and the choices that she has made or the, the way her life has turned out 
and you decide you're better than her or somebody else is better than her. You cannot look at her and decide that, oh, she's, she's not okay. We should be able to embrace diversity. We should, be able to see, we should be able to see the good in other people and we should be able to, to you know, just make allowances for one another. We have all taken decisions, good or bad, and of course, wherever we, are find, we will find ourselves now is a function of the decisions that we have taken over time. And so it is possible to look at all of that and say, oh, if I knew better or if this person knows better, they would have done differently. And you know one of the easiest things to do in life is to look at somebody else's life, lifestyle and look at their choices and be able to decipher and say, this person is headed for trouble. So it is very easy to see the, the, the issues in somebody else's life and you can just ignore the issues in your own life. And that is why we must make allowances for one another. We must be you just, you know, just be free with people. Don't don't categorize people based on maybe their culture or their religious uh, preferences and then use that to decide who you're going to, as to associate with or not. Don't do it because you don't even know what the other person has to offer you. So have conversations, network, make friends with people that are like you and with people that are not like you because it is in doing that that we're able to break the bias and we're able to like help each other, lift each other and we continue to just, you know, ensure that the women folk have the representation that we desire, deserve and that we desire in every area of life. So kudos to all the great organizations that are doing big things along the lines of helping women to network, mentoring women, mentoring other women, uh, Wendy's, Whiskers, all the big, uh, you know, all the organizations, big and small, actually, who are helping other women to grow and to be better and who are creating platforms. So there's some individuals, some ladies that are actually pulling their weight in that direction and, you know, having communities of women who are doing so well and they're helping them to help one another. And we just want to say kudos to you all. You're the champions of this, you know, season. Happy International Women's Day once again, everyone. I want to wish you the best and that when we are having this conversation again next year, I hope and I trust that you would have broken the bias in all these five ways that we have mentioned. So again, thank you. Thank you for showing up today and I will see you some other time. Bye for now. This is Coach B. Over and out. <laughs>